Hey everybody, it's Dave here at Blue Bears Games. As promised yesterday, today I am going to be continuing the unboxing of the Kaldheim Commander Precons. Yesterday was Elven Empire, and today's video is the Blue White or Azorius version called Phantom Premonition. Nothing like a good alliteration to go with your Precons, you know, EE for Elven Empire, PP for Phantom Premonition. Anyway, I'm going to go, just like I did yesterday, I'm going to go through the deck quickly, and then I'm going to give some suggestions on what I think you can add to this deck to make it better. Um, when I first viewed this deck, I was not a fan of the way that it was working, and then I looked further into it, especially since for me specifically, this is my wheelhouse. Blue-white was what I started on playing in 1993 and 4, and over time... It shifted away into blue and black, and then eventually into blue, black, and green. But, this is my wheelhouse. Let's just put it that way. I, I know how blue-white works. I know how slow it is, but I also know how methodic methodical it is. So, I'm going to go ahead and open it up, go over the deck, tell you what's inside the box, so to speak, as it's an unboxing. And then I will give you some suggestions on how to upgrade it. Some of them are a little expensive, some of them are not. You know, just... Depends on your budget, what you already have, and what have you. So, alright. As yesterday I did this, I'll show you the insert that comes with it. It li literally has a small play mat on learn how to play Commander. And the other side is the Phantom Premonition logo, I guess is what it's called. We'll go ahead and put that to the side. <laughs> and like yesterday, there was a box and a life counter so i'll put the box together this one looks like a better box for my liking i am a blue fan as far as color goes as you can tell by the name of my channel and it has pretty nice nifty little picture there so, so that's the phantom premonition box along with the life counter which goes to 40. so not bad. I do like the boxes. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Ever since they went through these boxes, I'm trying to figure out how I can get these made in mass for myself. Because when I sell my budget decks, I'd like to have a deck like that. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and pull this stuff out. Get rid of the trash. And start. So I'll zoom in just so you can see what this does. So, this is Ranner. The Ever Watchful. Blue, white. Two of any. It's a two, three. Flying Vigilance, so right there, the, the Power Thompson and Abilities just on the first couple are good for the, the converter mana cost. The first spell you foretell each turn costs zero to foretell. And then whenever you exile one or more cards from your hand and or permanents from the battlefield, you create a 1-1 one, one spirit creature token with flying. So, <clears throat> when I looked at the deck list initially, I used MTG Goldfish to take a look at it. It was not all that impressive at first. And then I looked deeper into it, and I went, let me go back to the days of when I used to actually play blue-white and see how I can look at this in a different way. And I found my little happy safe space, and I like what I see now. And I actually have a good bit of upgrades to do. Love the smell of fresh cards coming out of a pack in the morning. Alright, so it gives you Thopter tokens and Spirit tokens and Pegasi and Oh My, <laughs> and then nothing. And then on the other side are Birds, Birds, Kithkin Soldiers. Boar, so just some random stuff in a replicated ring, <laughs> and a dragon for some reason. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so those are the tokens. Nothing special there. Just like yesterday, I'm going to split the deck up in no particular fashion, because that's how they do it. And I'm just going to go over what it is, in order of the way that it's been put in the box. So we're going to go with Banishing Light, Cloud, Goat, Ranger... Evangel of Heliod, and you know what, I can see that I need to zoom out just a little bit more. That way you guys can see the cards. Alright, Evangel of Heliod. <laughs> and again, like yesterday, Flicker Wisp. Uh, if you have a card you want to take a look at, go ahead and pause the, the video for a second to read it. <laughs> or you can go to the link I'll be providing uh, to the MTG Goldfish. It has a clickable deck list, and when I say that it means that if you hover over it, or you click on it if you're on a phone... It actually shows you the card. So, uh, Ghostly Prison, great include. I actually, when I was doing my suggestions for stuff to put in there, I, I had this card in there because I didn't see it on the list. <laughs> now I do. Golden Light Commander, Core Cartographer, 
momentary blink. Return to dust. Good inclusion, wall of omens. When you blink this, it keeps drawing your cards. Ghostly flicker. Mist raven. Mold drifter. Seagate oracle. Whirler rogue. <coughs> Windfall. Cloud blazer. Empyrean Eagle, Migratory Route, Mist Meadow Witch, Soul Herder, Thunderclap Wyvern, Arcane Signet, Azorius Signet, Burnished Heart, Commander Sphere, Marble Diamond, Meteor Golem, don't really like them, Mind Stone, Cosmic Intervention, Hero of Bredegard, and I'll let you sit there for a second to read that one. That's a long one. <coughs> Stoic Farmer, Sage of the Beyond, so we're in the rares now, and these are probably the, uh, the new cards. Spectral Deluge, I like that. Uh, Certland Elementalist, these are the new ones for sure. Uh, Tales of the Ancestors, Ethereal Valkyrie, it's a spirit angel, <laughs> Angel of Finality, Angel of Serenity, and Cleansing Nova, <coughs> you'll have to excuse me, I'm a little under the weather this week too, alright, continuing with uh, Eerie Interlude, Geist Honored Monk, Marshall's Anthem, a Restoration Angel, and we'll talk about this in, a, in just a little bit when I go over the upgraded section. Storm Herd. Sun Titan, which seems to be <coughs> stereotypical. Every white commander deck that Wizards creates, they put a Sun Titan in. Arcane Artisan. Curse of the Swine, it's a good inclusion. Day of the Dragons, hadn't actually seen that on the list. Inspired Sphinx. Synthetic Destiny. Good inclusion here was Brago. I actually like this inclusion a lot. Uh, it's actually a not so oft printed card, so it's nice to see that. Sky Diamond. See <laughs> the the way that they put these decks together, I don't understand their thing. I mean we had some mana rocks earlier, now we have more. Soul Ring, Swift Foot Boots, and then some of the lands we're going to go over. And I don't think it's going to go over all the lands at once, so we'll see. Alright, so Azorius Chancery, Guild Gate, Command Tower, Cryptic Caves, Meandering River, Myriad Landscape, Opal Palace, which again, I guess that works. I'm not really a fan of that one in this deck. Sejiri Refuge. Tranquil Cove, and then some planes, let's go through the planes, anything cool, no, that's a cool looking uh, island by the way, some islands, and then the last of the deck, and then I'll go over some of the upgrades I would think, and again, pause the video if you want to take a look at one of the cards up close, uh, Iron Verdict, <laughs> not a very good card, Warhorn Blast, it's such an expensive, for the same ability that is in every set. The plus two plus one instant is in every set, and it's just getting more and more expensive. Behold, the multiverse. What are we in? The Marvel Cinematic Universe at this point? Raven form. Uh, saw it coming. I mean, they're just coming up with some weird names now for the counter magic. I mean, a couple of the last ones had something like a saw it coming. <laughs> Uh, Nico defies destiny. Uh, Vega the Watcher. It's actually a cool. As far as pictures go, I, I kind of like that the most out of the deck so far, anyway. Uh, Replicating Ring, which is a great inclusion for this kind of a deck. Uh, Gates of Istfel. And then the final one is Glacial Floodplain. So. Oh, that's one of the Snowlands. Why wasn't that in the other deck? I don't get it. <laughs> anyway, so those are the cards included in the pre-con. 
that's me opening the pack and then just reading off to you what they are. Again, if you want to see what something does, just pause the video. Now, as far as the rest of the deck goes, I'm going to do what I did last time. I'm going to put the commander here. You're going to see a couple of things happen here. I'm going to put some stuff up on the screen. But first, we focus on the commander. All right. So... For upgrades for this deck. At first I wasn't sure I liked the deck. I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5 stars. <laughs> Considering yesterday's deck was more focused on things. This is a little unfocused. You can actually focus it really heavily. So, suggestions. We're going to start with lands like I always do. So, let me move that up so it's centered. Alright. So, obviously we're in blue-white. So we're going to go with the, the trio of Tundra, Hallowed Fountain, and Flooded Strand. Most of us can't afford the OG Duel. That's fine. There are other options, so those are the first three. Uh, if you can't afford some of that, and trust me, I know most of us can't. You got Glacial Fortress, Adakar Wastes, and Mystic Gate. They're the lower end as far as monetary. Uh, then you can go even lower if you want. Maybe not so much on the second one, but you've got the Pathway. So it's Henge Gate and Mist Gate Pathway. You've got Sea of Clouds, and you've got Nimbus Maze. So, <clears throat> that'll help do your mana fixing for the way that this deck will run. I always talk about mana fixing and making sure that your lands are the most important thing that are straight. The rest of the deck will run smoothly if that's the case. You don't want too many enders to battlefield lands. But if you're on a budget, I understand why you would. Now, to go further. Uh, if you want to spend a little bit more money, I mean aside from the Tundra, uh, you can always do something like a Sarah's Sanctum, especially with the way that I would fix this deck up. Sarah Sanctum will tap for a lot. You've got Amiria Sky Ruin. And then one of my personal favorites, I've used this over the years, especially in blue white control decks. Soul Debbie Excavations from Alliances. It's the original Scry on a land. So that's just one of my suggestions. So uh, as far as ramp, they actually included a ton of mana rocks in this deck compared to the Elven Empire deck. Uh, so my suggestions are kind of light on this one. Obviously, I would go with if you want to get the God Hand, you go with a Jeweled Lotus, Mana Crypt, or Mox Diamond. Uh, on the lesser side, I would go with a Thought Vessel. I throw that in every deck because, especially with blue, you're gonna have card draw. So Thought Vessel. Uh, every once in a while, an Ever Flowing Chalice works. Might not so much in this deck, but it's a. It still ends up being a two to cast rock if you do it right. And then a Talisman of Progress, because again, it's a 2 to cast rock that help, taps to add the two colors you're looking for. Uh, since we're in white, you have other options, and that's unusual to say. It's not really mana ramp so much as mana fixing, but it still has some implications of ramping. You have Land Tax, Tithe, and Gift of Estates. They all go and search for planes. I think Land Tax actually just says basic lands, and since you're in two colors, you're going to have a lot more basic lands than you would if you were in three. So those are a few options you can do on top of what this deck does or instead of to uh, ramp the deck a little bit. Uh, the creature section. Creatures, kind of where this deck falls in how you're going to do it. You've got, you know, the Fortel theme. You've got the Exile or Blink or Flicker theme, however you want to call it. You can do a Spirit Tribal theme. You know, you can go a couple ways. So with the Fortel theme, there are three creatures I would include absolutely. Cosmos Charger, Glorious Protector, and Shepherd of the Cosmos. A couple of Cosmos there. They're all brand new cards, obviously, because they have the Fertel mechanic on them. Uh, if you were to go with the Exile theme, you've got Admonition Angel, uh, the new card Cosima, or Cosima, God of the Voyage, and then the oldie but goodie Deadeye Navigator. It exiles two things, and they come back. <laughs> it blinks them, and then you get to put the 1-1 token into play. Uh, continuing with the Exile theme, this is where two cards are going to come up and they're going to be key components to a deck that's literally an Exile theme. A Blink theme, a Flicker theme, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Eldrazi Displacer, it's a creature that lets you constantly keep flickering things left and right. Left and right can be yours, it can be your opponent's. It just lets you do what this guy does. It does what Renard does. It exiles things, brings them back, gives you a token. Uh, Felidar Sob uh, Guardian. <laughs> Felidar Guardian, I mentioned earlier that we're going to get back to Restoration Angel. It's a infinite combo. You blink one, 
you use one to blink the other, they keep coming back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I do not, I'm not really sure. I'll look it up and I will post it up here when I get to it. I do believe that's a infinite but needs to be broken combo or else it, the game ends in a tie. But it's still an infinite combo where you can keep flickering and get infinite 1-1 one, one tokens. Uh, and then the last one on the Exile theme is That's the Deep Dwelling. Uh, it only does it at the end of the turn. It's not the greatest, but it still adds to the effect you're looking for. Uh, on the Spirit Tribal theme, you've got things like Drug Skull Captain, Supreme Phantom, and not as much so, but it helps put more spirits into play, the Drug Skull Cavalry. It's a little expensive, but it can do the job. <laughs> there are other ways to do it as well. Those are just a few of the examples. Uh, and some of them are. Some of the, some of the more important, aside from making Anthem-style spirits, you've got things like Cure Great Glass Spinner so you can protect all of your creatures because it makes all your creatures... You have to break the glass to be able to target them. Selfless Spirit because you can sack it to make them... Uh, indestructible and uh, Karmic God because it fits the exile theme so that's where you can go with your spirit tribal <laughs> as far as utility goes uh, we're going to start off with there are so many different ways to flicker things that I'm just going to tell you on the next three things I tell you go to the MTG familiar app go to whatever app you use to look up what cards do and just look for exile return in the section where you ask what the card does and put them in there you'll see a whole bunch this deck actually includes a bunch there are still more out there so just go ahead and take a look at that uh, you can do counter magic <clears throat> the counter magic you're gonna have to go by what you have look at what you want and it's kinda like how blue white rolls it's just sit back and either counter everything or pillow fort is what I'm gonna go with on that one there's mass removal, we're in white. You have things like Psychonic Rift and, and Wrath of Gods and stuff like that. I'm not going to put them on the screen. You guys should know what those are. But you can go that route as well. Um, there are card draw of things. Uh, we're in blue, so that helps you. You have Aristic Study, Mystic Remora, and Brain Geyser Style Effects. And what I mean by that is, is Brain Geyser is two blue and X, draw X cards. You have so many options in blue for that. You have Sphinx's Revelation. So many different ways to do that. I didn't want to list them all, so I'm just going to say a generic Brain Geyser style effect. Uh, control Factor. You can do, as I was telling you, like a Pillow Fort. So you've it already included the, uh, what was it? The white version of Propaganda. So I always forget the name of it just because Ghostly Prison. So I actually had originally added Ghostly Prison to this list. It's already in the deck, right out of the box. You can add Propaganda, uh, Sphere of Safety, because I would change this into a Pillow Fort deck myself, have a lot of enchantments that protect you, and then the Sphere of Safety is just the icing on the cake. And then you have Norn's Annex. So <clears throat> a couple ways you can do a Pillow Fort. Uh, adding to that, you can do, trust me, I know nobody has this, and if you do, good on you. You can add a moat. Uh, if you're not interested in a moat, you can do it to Fairy's Moat, which is a much lesser version of moat. And even Island Sanctuary. You should be able to draw enough cards because you're in blue that Island Sanctuary won't hurt you. You can make it so that nothing can attack you except for flying creatures and or island wall creatures. And you should have a bunch of flyers to be able to protect yourself. Uh, the combat bonuses. So this will be more of a... Uh, Anthem style effects because you've already got the creatures like Supreme Phant Phantom. This is for the tribal theme. You've got favorable winds because most of the things you're going to create are going to be flying. Again, Sarah Aviary, same thing as favorable favorable winds. Uh, and Glorious Anthem and Ilk. So there are many iterations in white of a Glorious Anthem style effect. You've got Spear of Heliod and such. So just go ahead and look on the MTG Familiar app or whatever you use to look up cards and just put in... Creatures plus one, plus one, and you'll get a whole bunch of them. Just filter it out to be white only. Uh, I have to mention, there's also the Rest in Peace enchantment that you can use that will really help this deck. What that does is, it says whenever any creature tokens die, they exile instead, and I think everything else exiles too. So, here's the cool part. 
when something dies, it gets exiled. That triggers Renner. So a token dies, it could create another one. If you put a sack outlet in here, you have an infinite combo if you really do it right. I don't want to get into the infinite combos because I don't really want to do the whole... I wanted to follow the theme of Renner, not go into infinite stuff so much as it didn't fit his theme. Kind of like the uh, Restoration Angel in Felder Garden. But you could. You could throw in an Ashnod's Altar or uh, the other altar that lets you sacrifice for to get one color of any color. And you can do that and then you can just, you know... Stroke a genus the whole board out of the, you know, out of the game, but that's for, I don't know, that's just not how I wanted to run this deck, but you can do that. So those are options you can do, especially if you have the rest in peace in place, it's an infinite combo if you do it right. So, uh, and the last part we're going to go over as far as additions that you can add, uh, I've got Planeswalkers. Dovin Bon, Elspeth Terrell, and Gideon Ally of Zendikar are three options that you can choose. They both help this deck in, in a couple ways. Uh, the next set of three are going to help it way more, though. You've got Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, Teferi, Time Reveler, and Venger the Sojourner. If there ever was a deck that Venger the Sojourner fit into, it's this deck. There is no better deck I can imagine. I have tried. I've had them since they came out. Haven't had anything to do with them. If I do decide to upgrade upgrade this deck and make it my blue white option that I have yet to find, that'll be the first inclusion, I first change I make. So there's Venge of the Sojourner. So those are just a few, <laughs> just a few, not all, but just a few of the options that you can do to upgrade this deck and make it a little bit more powerful. I think this is a fun deck. I actually at first didn't understand it. Like I said, my head isn't in the blue white realm lately. Uh, but I went back to my old days and went and thought about it, and I was like, yeah, this deck is actually pretty good. Uh, the elf deck would be faster. This is more methodical, but if you do a couple upgrades, this deck actually can take control of that game and be better than the elf one. So, it just takes a little bit of thinking. So, the win cons, again, go wide. You can do it, you know, the flicker uh, effects. You can do the spirit tribal effects. You can do pillow fort, which is what I would do. Personally, you where you protect yourself and then create a horde and then go wide anyway. So those are a few of the things. So hopefully you got something out of it. If not, you know, I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, as far as the rest of this video goes, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or you want to talk about this deck or anything of, with the upgrades, go ahead and send me a message on the Facebook page, uh, comment in the section below. You know, whatever. Uh, you can send me an email. I have uh, bluebearsgames at gmail.com. I own that email, so you can go ahead and talk to me that way if you don't feel like having it out there in the open. Uh, so please, like, subscribe, share. I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw that out there. Like the video, uh, subscribe to the channel, and share the video out. I'd like to get some, some more people into seeing what I do and how I do it. I've recently upgraded to a couple of new... Uh, video editors to make them look more professional. I'm hoping that that's helping make you know people enjoy the videos more. I can't change the content. They are what they are. It's just an unboxing uh, or a deck tech. It can get kind of dry. I'll add some sound effects to make it better, what have you. But hopefully you guys are liking it. And gals, uh, set, drop me a line. Let me know what you think. Uh, so uh, until next week, uh, have a good one, and I will see you then.